Today you'll see two super beautiful knit garments. The original pattern is for a top, but I've also made a dress because a top can always be a dress as well. And you'll see a lot of fun techniques that you might be familiar with when you're sewing woven projects, but they translate very well to this design, giving you an awesome finish inside that's partially lined. Here's a little fast peek of one of them. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and today I've got two knit garments to share with you. I will say right up that these knit projects are the ones that are going to take you less than an hour to sew. This design is full of amazing details and great sewing techniques. As I was making these garments I was very familiar with these techniques because I've used them in the past to make woven garments but as you'll see a lot of techniques that you use when you're sewing woven can also apply when you're making a neat project. It just depends on the style and a few extra little things you need to do before you start. The result is amazing. And what I'm talking about is a new pattern from Itch to Stitch. As you know, Kenneth from Itch to Stitch always has great sewing techniques, great designs, and just a really fun way to put things together that give you a really clean, professional look inside. And I really, really enjoy that. In the patterns, you will never find shortcuts. You always find really, really nice ways to sew things and I really enjoy sewing each to stitch. I've been a pattern tester for years and I'm always excited when a new project comes up. And this one is called the Spear and Tank. So I'll show you some pictures here of Kenneth, the designer. Those are the pictures you'll see on the website. And this is a pattern designed for neat fabrics. There are many of the steps here that are sewn actually on the sewing machine. Very few of the seams here are sewn with the serger and sort of towards the end of the project. And let me tell you how much I love that. Although sewing with the serger is perfectly fine, there are features in this pattern that really need the precision of the sewing machine. And you wouldn't actually be able to sew some of these aspects just directly on the serger. As you can see there, there is a v-neckline. I love that. There is a center front seam. On the bodice piece that is on the top, right underneath the bust, you have three pleats on each side and that will give you the shaping you need for your bust. And then you have the piece that comes underneath, that's a waist piece. And then you have the bottom bodice piece, which will attach to that, making the front composed of three pattern pieces. But at the back, it's easier. You just have one piece that's cut on the fold. Now, what's really cool about the way that this is finished is that it's partially lined inside. The front piece is all lined. And that makes the way that you finish these armholes and necklines really, really different and really, really fun to sew. Another little detail that there is here is that on the shoulder seams on the front you have a little bit of gathers here, just right there. You won't find gathers inside on that lining piece that the front has, only on the main piece, the one that you'll see on the outside. And the top will reach the mid hip, depends on your height. It's not meant to be a really long top or a crop top. The spear and tank is for knit fabric, so you can't use a woven fabric. You need a knit fabric that will stretch 50% both horizontally and vertically. And it is recommended to use more medium weight fabrics. So sometimes the light fabrics won't really work that well. So you can use cotton spandex. I think that is a perfect fabric for it. It's just really unfortunate that I don't have nice cotton spandex. The only cotton spandex I can find here is really, really heavy. And it's the type I used to make waistbands with. You don't need a fabric that drapes because this is a fitted style. So if you have access to nice prints or nice colors, nice soft cotton spandex that stretches 50% horizontally and vertically, I think that is a really nice option. A lot of testers made their tops out of ITY and working with different types of ITY over the years, I know that some are thinner, heavier than others. There's also different types of qualities of the knit as well. So in my stash, I found about a yard of the heaviest ITY I could find. I didn't want to make my spear and top at a really light ITY. I have others in there that I just found were way too light for the project. So I would say my ITY is heavier than other ITYs I found. Other fabrics you can use are interlock. Just make sure you have a fabric that is not super light. That's it. Especially because this pattern is only lined at the front and it's not lined at the back. So if you use a fabric that's very, very lightweight, you know, it's not going to look very good at the back. You're going to see your bra, the outline of your bra and things like that. Another good option is an athletic knit. You know, I love using athletic knits. I can find nice prints. They're really, really high quality. They have great stretch and recovery. And I just have many more options that way. 
So I've made a top with a heavier ITY and of course I've made a top and hacked it into a dress and for that I used an athletic knee that has a really really cool print perfect for it. Because the Spear and Tank is a new pattern, you know what that means. It means that it has a 20% off discount for the first week. So if you like this style while you watch this video and you would like to make it for yourself, I will leave you my affiliate link down below in the description box. When you use my affiliate link, it doesn't cost you any extra, but I receive a small commission that helps support what I do here on the channel. The sizing is really good from sizes double zero to 40 US. That goes up to a hip of 63 inches. And this is a neat pattern and there's a regular bust option and then a full bust option. If you have an A to a B cup size, sewing cup size, the regular bust option will be good for you. If you measure your upper bust circumference and your full bust circumference and it's 3 inches or more, or a C, D, E cup size, just a larger sewing cup size, the full bust will give you a better fit at the shoulders with more space at the bust. My difference is a three inch difference. I use a sewing C cup size, so I thought the full bust option was going to be perfect for me. And I've sewn other patterns that Kenneth designs with the regular bust and the full bust option, and the full bust option works really, really well for me. It fits me perfectly. So I didn't really have to think much about what option I was going to use. Now, this is a fitted top. It's not a top that has a lot of ease. But that's something that you can always tweak if you want something a little bit less tight. Maybe you could go up a size at the waist and the hips. But basically it's fitted at the bust, about 3 inches of negative ease. And that's absolutely fine because your fabric stretches 50%. So it's not going to feel tight. It's just going to look really nice fitted there all on this upper chest area and the bust. At the waist you have a tiny bit of ease, around an inch of positive ease at the waist. And going down the hips there's pretty much zero ease. I think there's a quarter of an inch of ease or something. So it is a fitted top, but that's why making it out of a fabric that's more medium weight would always be more appropriate than using something really, really light. And then having a fitted top like this is perfect for layering, for using under jackets and things because it's not gonna give you bulk, but it's not just a fitted tank, you know? It's got all those lovely details with the neckline and the pleats and the waist piece. It's just really, really lovely, you know? The sizes I've chosen here for me is a 12 with the full bust option. And then I blended out to a 14 and a 16. Now on the diagram, you can see that I did use the shorten and lengthen lines. On the top bodice piece, there is a shorten and lengthen line. And then on the back piece, there are two, one above and then one at the hips. So I used the shorten and lengthen lines that are above and I added an inch there for the front and because there's a lining piece that has to match that I also had to add one inch to the lining piece and around the same area here I added to the back. Down below I didn't add anything. The reason why I added an inch of length to this area of the bodice was that because even though I'm choosing a full bust option and I'm going to have the correct fit and width and everything. I usually tend to miss some vertical ease and just because I'm taller it just makes a really big difference for me and I added an inch to my pattern and I made my muslin. I'll show you a picture of my muslin. I just wanted to make sure that all the pleats there that that piece on the top was actually going to be right below my bust and not sort of at half of my bust or trying to cut my bust in half. I was just really worried that that was going to be okay. I made a quick muslin you know not lined nothing like that just to check that this was going to be underneath my bust and it was, I, I could confirm that the adjustment I'd made on the pattern was correct and then I went ahead and cut my pattern. Up close and so personal is a little bit longer because I did film a lot of it for you. I know a lot of the techniques you'll see here is not what you typically sew. So if you are newer to sewing, I think all of this might be a little bit new. And if you're more experienced, maybe still it's not what you typically sew, but you might recognize the techniques of course. I'm going to be showing you, apart from the sewing of the bodice, basically almost the whole thing. I'm just missing the side seams at the ends because that was just very, very simple. I'm going to show you how I blended my sizes from a 12 to a 14 to a 16. Remember the front is composed of three pattern pieces. It's not that straightforward to blend the sizes, although it's not hard. You do have to unite them and I'm going to show you how. So let's see how to sew the spear and tie. Don't you think this is starting to
I'm just quickly going to show you how I'm going to blend sizes on the side seam of the front because there's three pieces that compose the front. There's the top front piece that has the pleats over there and then there's that center piece in the waist that's narrower here and goes wider at the center. Now this piece was printed the other way around so that's why I've drawn the lines of the sizes there with my pen. And then you have the bottom front right there. So I basically just pin them all together like I would sew them with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right there and right there. Now I'm blending between three sizes but I know the three sizes I needed from here down. On these pieces here I just printed two. Why? Because all these pleats here I didn't want to have three different lines there that would get me confused. I just have two lines there from two sizes so that's less confusing. And I didn't need the size 16 up here on this area. I just needed it down here on the hips. So that's why you see that my front top piece unites to this one, to this small one, but there's an excess here and that's because I've already got the size 16 on this piece, but it's not there and the size 14 matches right there. So basically I'm just going to do it by hand. I think it's by hand is so much easier. I'm going to start a little below the arm side where I have size 12 and I'm just going to blend out to a 14 there. I have both of these seam allowances pressed down like you would have them when you sew. And just from here, I'm going to start drawing from the 12, just slightly out to a 14 here at the waist. From this point, I'm going to start drawing out to a 16 when I reach the full hip. So there. So this is the shape that I'm going to need. So I'm going to cut this out. My pieces, when I sew them together, they are going to create a smooth line from the 16 to the waist at the 14 to the 12 up above here at the bust. Okay, there I've cut out my pieces. I've got 12 to 14 to 16. Now I can take these pins out and my pattern pieces are blended on the sides and they are going to make sense with, this, with the seams true to be pressed down as well. This one's gonna look like that. So don't think that's wrong, <laughs> it's correct. And when I sew and put all this together, I, will, I am going to get a nice smooth curve on the side seam. The back is just one piece, so I'm just going to, so blending is going to be so much easier. I'm just going to start from there, go out to a 14 there, and then go out to a 16 there. Much easier, you don't need to unite anything, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the front is composed of three, so it, you couldn't just blend them individually or else when you put it together, it's not going to make sense. This is the top front piece that I've just blended from 12 to 14 and I have the lining piece here that's just separate. And so I'm just going to place this on top, a line up here and just copy the line so that it makes sense because the lining should have the same shape as what you're cutting out. So. That red line there is going to be my pattern piece for the lining and it will match my main front. These are the main pattern pieces for the spear and tank and the top is composed of three pieces, a top front, a bottom front and in between those you have a front waist. The bottom front and the front waist are both cut on the fold there but the top front is cut not on the fold, there will be a center front seam right there. On this piece, when you sew that center front seam, you won't sew it all the way to the top. There is a dot where you stop about 3 eighths below that edge right there. And it's the same thing that's going to happen to the top front lining piece that's over there. I didn't have enough of my main fabric to cut my lining piece, so I'm using a black tricot lining fabric. It stretches the same amount, it is lightweight, it's totally appropriate. On this area, you will form three pleats. But on the lining piece, you will take up the same volume, but only in one pleat. That's not going to be seen, it'll be on the inside. The back is simple, it's just cut on the fold. And then we have one binding piece that will finish the back, and two binding pieces that will finish only the back armhole. The front armhole and the front neckline will be finished with the lining piece, so it'll be super clean very interesting to put together and you need to have a lot of stay tape that doesn't stretch if you don't have that i just cut my own strips of three eighths of an inch wide interfacing doesn't stretch very lightweight and this is going to be used to stabilize the back neckline there the armholes both sides and on the lining piece the neckline and the armholes so I'll just take my time and fuse everything I need to do. You don't need to fuse anything onto this main front piece. It's just on that lining piece, the armhole and the neckline there, 
that neckline on the back and the armhole on the back. This is the back piece and you can see the edges have been interfaced. It'll stabilize it and prevent wavy edges. It won't stretch out. And I'm just gonna put these right sides up, flip it around and I have the binding pieces here. There are two for the armholes and one for the neckline. All you need to do is fold one of the raw edges in by 3 8 like that. So I've done that on all of them. These are for the armholes and this is for the neckline. All we need to do is pin this here the raw edge against the raw edge of the neckline right sides together and sew it with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance trim snip and the stitch flip to the inside and top stitch which is how you finish which is how you usually would finish a binding now notice that the binding piece is the same length as the neckline so you don't have to stretch anything i pinned all the binding pieces to the back armholes and the neckline and note that I've pinned them and I'm going to sew them from this side up, the side that's interfaced and the binding is going to be down there. I just think it'll be easier. This side won't stretch because it's interfaced so the press of foot will move smoother. These necklines and armholes won't be stretching. They are interfaced so they won't be stretching and I'll be sewing everything with a straight stitch and 3 8 seam allowance. I'll be doing the same thing for the neckline and the armholes. I'm just trimming away extra seam allowance and I will be snipping on the curves of this back neckline and doing the exact same thing for the armholes. Now that that's done, I'm going to push the seam allowance underneath the binding and under stitch right there on the edge. And I'll be doing it like this, having the binding on my left hand and the main piece on my right, pushing the seam allowance to the left and under stitching right there. And I'll do the same for these as well. Now I'm under stitching. I have the binding to the left. Seam allowance underneath is pressed to the left. And here is the main piece. This is one of the armholes with the binding sewn and under stitched. And remember at the beginning we had already pressed one of these raw edges. So this has already got a memory crease there. All you need to do is get that folded edge, bring it inside like that. And now top stitch. Because this fabric is slippery I'm just going to give it a quick hand baste and hold that binding in place just huge stitches and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch after hand basting these bindings towards the inside of the top I'm just going to top stitch them nothing special and I'll repeat with both armholes and neckline On the outside you just have one seam and on the inside you have two, the under stitching and the top stitching on the edge, fold right there. It's very neat because this is a stable area, it's not meant to stretch and that's why I used a straight stitch to do this. Even though I'm working with a stretchy knit, this area is going to act like it's not stretchy. These are the fronts, the black one here is the lining and that is the main front. You can see the interfacing I've used onto the neckline of only the lining and also on the armhole, similar to what I did to the back piece. These don't have interfacing. And now we have these center front seams. I want to sew these first before sorting out the pleats. I would just rather have one piece to deal with, you know, with the pleats rather than having four separate pieces. So you can see there's a dot right there. That is where you have to start and reinforce and then sew all the way down. It will be a straight stitch. This seam will be pressed open. You can't do this with a serger. Same as on the main, you see a red dot. I'll start, reinforce and sew all the way down. It will be left open there on the top. This is where I've just done the front seam and you can see these jagged edges. These are what are going to form the pleats. Now I have this black and white. It's really hard to mark anything on here and I prefer to work on pleats from the wrong side. Anyway, when pleats have a nice size, meaning that when you fold them, there's a nice amount of fabric volume that you can actually hold these at micro pleats. I like to pin them just like you see there. And then baste that, just use a long stitch length that can be removed later and that's so easy to do and it'll give you super, super accurate pleats without needing to worry about how to fold it, in which direction and all of that, which you can actually do as well. But this way is just easier. So I've already pinned those three pleats there and I have three pleats on this other side. There's a center front seam that we've just done. 
and there's a pleat there, there's a pleat there, and there's a pleat there. Maybe you can see my red friction line marks. So all I do is take that line and meet it with that line, making the pleat like this. The fabric there is right sides together, and I'm going to get a pin, put it through there on that red line, make sure it comes out on the other side also on the red line, and just pin this pleat. They are short, they may be like an inch and a half long. They won't be sewn down, these are just to form them. They will be free pleats once the garment is finished. And then you can see one pleat is folded. And now I'm just going to fold the next one. You can see the line there meets with the line at the back. They have a diagonal type of shapes. They're not like rectangle type pleats. And you can see on the red line, that's where I'm going to sew with a long stitch length to base these together. And then it will be super easy to fold them. The fabric itself will tell you what direction they're meant to be folded because these pleats have been trued in a certain way. So even if you wanted to make a mistake, you're going to know right away that it's not that way. So I finished pinning those three pleats on this side. I had already done these and I'll just start sewing these pleats. It's a really short area. I'm not back tucking anything because these are temporary. They will be removed later. But for now, they'll help us put all this together really neatly and really accurately. Okay, so it looks quite messy. There's quite a lot of threads here, but it doesn't matter. What matters is the end result and these won't be here in the end. So what we need to do now is just fold the pleats out towards the side seam when you're working on it from the wrong side. Here is the side seam. And you can see that when you do that, you have a straight edge at the bottom with everything. If you wanted to make a mistake and fold them this way towards the center front, look how those edges are gonna be finished right there. So that would tell you immediately that that's the wrong way to fold them. So the fabric will always tell you, same as here, we're going to be folding them this way towards the side seam. This is in the context of working with it from the wrong side of the fabric. You know, if you were doing this the other way, then it would be completely different. But the end result will be exactly the same. The pleats will look exactly the same as if you worked from the right side of the fabric. So I'm going to base these. Just base this down. I'm going to start from the center front and base this way. But to base the other side, I'm going to do it from this way to make sure that the volume of the pleats is going that way and that I'm not trying to sew against them. So that's how that looks. We'll just leave it like that for now. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine later on. And you can pull these threads here off way later. But for now, the pleats are done. And this center front has been done as well. Now remember on the lining we had just one pleat, not three pleats like on the main. So this is even easier. This is also the wrong side of the fabric. There's the center front seam. And we're just going to meet these lines together. And I'll do the exact same thing, only here it's easier. Now again, we're working from the wrong side of the fabric. Push the bulk of the pleat towards the side seam here, not towards the center front. And just align this here at the bottom. It'll match, as you can see there. And then do a quick baste right there and the same right there. These are the front shoulder seams. They are wider than the back shoulder seams because these will be gathered. So we need to do two rows of parallel stitching there to be able to gather them. Do them both within the seam allowance, so pretty much at the edge with a long stitch length. Now that we have the main top front and the lining ready with the pleats, we are going to unite them at the neckline. So I'm going to put this one right sides up, the main and the lining on top. I want to sew this neckline with the lining on top because that's the side that's interfaced. So align these right there at the neckline from the top edge down to here. And this is something that you've seen me do with woven styles. Here, remember we left a little bit undone on both the main and the lining. That is up to where you sew. So initially you push all the seam allowance towards one side for both the lining and the main, and you will sew right up to that little dot right there. So these have to align perfectly. This dot where I started sewing there with 
where it started sewing right there. And I love these for wovens. You know, this pattern is for knits, but it has so many techniques that are the same as doing a woven. So it's really enjoyable. <laughs> Make sure that aligns there. And this will be done in two goes, in two steps. So first one side up to the dot, and then I'm gonna push all the seam allowance to the other side, and then start at the dot and finish all the way up the top. Okay, I've got it pinned. Remember, I'm gonna start at the shoulder seam finish right there moving the seam allowance of the main underneath to one side and this one to one side and stop reinforce there then flip the seam allowance to the other side start again on that same point reinforce and then finish on the other side So I've sewn right up to there, now flip the seam allowance to the other side and I'm going to start exactly right there. Seam allowances always have to be free here. Okay, so you see the seam allowance is free there and free there and then you have like an intersection where all these seams meet there. When we flip this, we need to understitch now and we need to sew the seam allowance towards the lining right there. This is the shoulder seam, but I'm not going to start understitching all the way up the top. It'll get in the way later. So I'll start about five eighths of an inch below the edge of the shoulder right there. And I'll go there, but not right up to the tip of the V neckline just a little far away from there, making sure that the seam allowance is always free there that I don't catch it. And then there's the v-point I'll start a little beyond there about three-eighths of an inch after doing that under stitching we'll keep everything right sides together still the neckline and now we are going to align the armholes I also want to sew with the lining on top because that's the interfaced area. So I will align this curve here of the lining and the main armhole and sew that 3 eighths of an inch and the same on the other side. Okay, this is looking very messy inside, but it's gonna look very neat on the outside. So the armholes are sewn, I've trimmed seam allowances, snipped where there's curves, and now I'm gonna flip this, flip this armhole like this. And the stitch, I'm going to have more access if I start from this open area and head up to the shoulder seam. I'll have the lining in this case on my right hand, the seam allowance is pointing towards the lining underneath. That's always the way you understitch. And I'll be sewing on the edge as far as I can up to the top. I'm not sure if I'll have access all the way up. I'm always touching making sure the seam allowance is actually underneath the lining. And I think if I put my thumb through the shoulders, I'll have more access. Making sure that nothing gets caught under there. I might have full access but again I won't sew all the way up to the shoulder seam I'll stop a little distance before that okay that was fiddly but possible you can see that he close to the shoulder seams I don't have under stitching on this side I'll have the lining towards the left and the seam allowance towards the left I'm starting at the open area at the bottom and going up to the shoulder the same way
Okay, so you can see how this front is lined and it's finished the V neckline and the armhole super neatly. It is a hot mess, so I'll go to the iron and neaten this up. Okay, I've given it a good tidy up. Everything's pressed really neatly. Look how clean this V is. So nice. That's, this is how it looks on the other side. So the front armhole, the neckline is finished separately from the back. Now after giving this a press, we have to flip this the wrong side again. So just flip it out like that again. We had forgotten about the back. This is the one we did previously where the bindings are done for the neckline and the armholes. So place your back there, right sides up. Bring this over again, what we had just been working on. The front, the main fabric here, wrong sides up. The lining is down there. And now we're going to slide this back inside. This will mean that the front and the back are right sides together, as you can see. And these shoulders are going to slide into these shoulders right here, between these two layers, between the main and the lining. Now, this can be quite fiddly, and that's why I didn't want to understitch all the way up, because I think that gets in the way with you being able to get this edge right there where the main meets the lining, right here on top. But make sure you align those right there. I'm going to pin this here, and on this other side, on the outer edge where the armhole is, this also needs to align right there where these two pieces meet. That's why you want that free from understitching. I'm also going to pin this right here. Now you can see on the front we have all this excess. That's why we had done that gathering stitch. So this is the time where we need to pull on these threads right here and gather this front until it's the same length as all the other ones. So you can see the gathering there it makes it the same length. Make sure these gathers are as tidy as you can make them be. And that's one side done. Then this gets sewn at 3 8 seam allowance. Now the other side is the same. This is the other shoulder seam from the back that's going to be pushed through here between these two layers. Make sure you have the armhole of the back meeting the armhole of this front. If you get it twisted in there by mistake, you're going to end up with a twisted shoulder and you're going to have to do it again. So make sure this edge that is inside is the armhole and that you have an armhole right there, meet along the edge right there. This one here is the back neckline and it's going to match the front neckline here. It's really easy to get confused and get this side, what's in here, the back twisted in there. So just make sure you confirm. Now that we have both ends pinned, now we have to pull on these to gather this front. Okay, that matches there. Okay, and that's how this is going to look. <laughs> it's going to look very strange, but it will make sense. A few layers to go through and we sew that at 3 8 with a straight stitch. You could also serge this seam but just because I'm sewing everything with the sewing machine I might as well. Plus this is going to be hidden inside so it's not like it needs to be finished. So you are sewing with all the gathers here on top so you can see what's going on. Okay so we have it like this and now let's flip this and we're going to bring the back out from there and you're going to see that the back is going to be enclosed within these two layers from the front and there and that's how that's going to come out through there and the same on this other side so on the front you have gathers and that's how it's going to look on the inside super clean okay so that's done the shoulder seams are done you can give that a good press and now these side seams where you have the main and the lining are not together so we're just going to align this here on the sides and give it a quick base I'm going to align the center front seams right there from the lining and the main. Make sure they're on the same place. Remember we have a lot of threads that are going to be removed from all that basting, but they are still there. Okay, I've got it all pinned. I'm going to start here, pivot there, go across the bottom here, go across and then go up again. So this stitch is just to hold them in place. I'm going to use a long stitch length, nothing special and right on the edge. Okay, so this is the bottom of this short bodice. There are the pleats right there. There's the center seam that you maybe can see. And now we have this small waist piece. Put this like that. There's a straighter edge and then a curved edge. Place that curved edge right on top. I have marked right there the center that I'm going to meet with the center seam that I have here. And you have a curve here on the bottom of this bodice and you also have a curve on the waist. So that just needs to match. If you match the sides and the center and just keep matching up, everything's going to match up. 
Now this seam here, I am actually going to use the serger for the first time since I started sewing this, so why not? It's straightforward, there's nothing complex about it. And it's a 3 8 seam allowance, so I'll just be trimming a little bit as I go. Okay, so this waist piece has been sewn onto the bodice. That's the center front there, the pleats there. They're still sewn on and we can actually remove them now. I'm going to get my seam ripper and just pull out a few threads from the top of these pleats that are done. Find the thread and just pull them out and that will release the pleats like that. See, nothing was tacked. So pulling these threads out is a breeze. They come flying right off. So that's how the pleats are going to look right there. The volume of the pleat is towards the center here. So the pleats going this way, three. And three here. Okay, after this curved waist piece, we have the bottom of the front that was also cut on the fold. So this will go underneath. And you also find notches here to match this up. I'm going to put the top edge right here, right sides together with this piece right there. Match it up. I'm also going to serge this with 3 8 seam allowance. And then after this seam has been sewn, then we can sew the side seams of the front and the back. Now that the front has been done, it's composed of three pieces, all those seam allowances get pressed down. Now you match the armholes here and the whole side seam and that's it. You sew it and then you hem your top and you're done. This is my top, my official tester version with my heavier ITY. This fabric was sent to me by a lovely subscriber in the States, Amy. She sent me it a couple of months ago a few pieces of fabric and this was one of them and it was perfect, perfect. It was actually the heaviest ITY I had in my stash. So it was really, really appropriate for the project. From the distance, it just looks like a black and white print, right? But look, if you look up close, you'll see they are little dogs. So you have to be really up close to see. So it is a directional print because all the little dogs have the heads up here. But because I only had a yard and I was making miracles to make this happen, this bottom piece, I cut it with the dogs upside down. You can see that the dogs' heads are down <laughs> and at the back, it's the same. The dogs' heads are going down. But hey, you know, this is such a busy print. The dogs are so little. When you just look at it, no one's gonna know. And I really, really wanted to get my top out of the yardage that I had. So, you know, sometimes I will do this, even though I know it's a directional print, I will do it and cut the pieces the other way because I just wanted my top and I love it. It just looks like a black and white from far away and no one's gonna know that some of the dogs are upside down. <laughs> but anyway, you saw that the binding was done separately for the back neckline and for the back armhole and that the back piece is enclosed within these two. The front is lined and there are the little gathers there on the shoulders. So nice, loved sewing and putting all of this together. The technique to do the V neckline. I filmed it and shown it to you before in videos that I've dedicated especially for V necklines and it's something that I've sewn with woven projects. It's exactly the same and it can be done on a knit. Now I like the fact that everything is stabilized with interfacing inside because it makes these seams not stretch out. Look, look how stable they are. I really love the addition of that, of stabilizing everything. It's just really, really good. The depth of this armhole is perfect and it's also something I wanted to check with that quick muslin I made. It's not super low, it's perfectly covered and perfectly comfortable right there. And it's super neat at the back with the binding. So that's really, really cool. I love putting this together. The pleats, you saw how easy that could be done. If you do it like I do it, I think it's easier. <laughs> the waist piece is there. Now this is a print. Of course, you can see the features less than if I'd made it into a, you know, with a solid, but it's just the fabric I wanted to use. This is how it looks on the inside. You can see the binding there on the back armholes, the back neckline, and it's different at the front because it's lined. So it's only lined at the front. So neat. This is one of the seams that is surged. This is another seam that is surged and then the side seams are surged. But actually all the rest, putting all of this you saw was done with the sewing machine. Love that. <laughs> I love using my sewing machine to sew my neat projects. If you haven't noticed, I just think it's so, so nice and so accurate. So nice. And then there's just a hem that's turned up. So once you're done with this, basically, it's just really simple. So nice. <laughs> Let's see how this one looks. This is my spear and tank made with a 90 knit. I love that waist piece in the center and the pleats underneath the bust. 
I've used multi sizes, 12 full bust, 12 14 waist and 16 hips. I've added an inch of length on the upper part of this top. Up closer you can see the details a little bit more. Centre front seam, that curved waist piece underneath the top bodice piece has the pleats, fits really really well. There is basically zero ease at the hips, you can see it is a nicely fitted top. In my video you saw how to put together that neckline, armholes and that they're all stable. Nothing's going to stretch and become wavy, the depth of the v-neckline is really nice and I really love the top, the cover of the armholes. It's just a really special knit top that makes you feel extra special because of the lining, the way it feels on, it's just amazing and the details are so pretty. love these bodices that finish under the bust and then have a waist piece. I love those designs like that. So nice. So after making this, of course, I had to make a dress. A top can always be a dress and had the perfect fabric for it. You can see that the front was composed of three pieces and actually this seam there is the waist, but there's no seam at the back. So I created a seam at the back. <laughs> when you look at this on the inside, this seam there actually hits the waist. So on the same place at the back, I just created a waist seam and I drew that on my pattern. I folded the excess away and created a separate bodice and with what was left over, I measured that, added the amount I needed. So from the original hem of the pattern for both the front and the back, I added about 15 and a half inches all the way down and created skirts and then slash spread, make the skirts a little wider, just increase the A-line and then I had skirt pieces to put onto the bodice. I filmed all the process of the sewing and hacking the skirt and all those things in quite a lot of detail for Patreon. So if you are on my Patreon page and have access to my exclusive content, you can see all about the dress over there on Patreon. And this is my dress. This fabric is amazing. It's an athletic knit. I love the print. It feels so, so cool to touch. It's medium weight has a lovely drape and I did need it to drape because this actually has a nice fuller skirt. The top doesn't have to drape, but I wanted the dress to drape, <laughs> the skirt at least. And I made the bodice, nothing has changed with the bodice. I have the pleats, the waist piece right there, and instead of having a shorter top there, it's just that from there, I have a wider skirt. So nice, and at the back, I have a waist seam right there and the skirt that goes underneath. I wanted to line the bodice and I'll show you inside. Now I've shown you before when I do my clean sleeveless lining methods. I have a few videos about that on the channel already. And that is the way that I line this bodice with an extra step because I also had to enclose the seam of that waist piece. So this is how it looks inside. I've used another lining fabric. It's actually black lining fabric. This fabric is for lining needs. I didn't want to use my main fabric. So you can see the center front seam, the pleat of the lining, you can see the waist piece. This is enclosed. These two seams are together there, so it's not loose. So it's closed up to there, and then side seams are enclosed also. Then everything's understitched. And then after having the bodice lined and everything done, then I just sewed on the skirt on the round, which was the most easy part of it. <laughs> Took a little bit longer, a few extra steps, and as I said, you know, if you want to see those things that are a little bit more advanced, you can join my Patreon page because I always show a lot more content there. Love it, it's just my style, just what I love. These colors are everything, so let's see how this one looks. This is the dress I made after doing my pattern test. I had the pattern to have a wider skirt. It's not a very full, full skirt, but it is a nice skirt. I added an extra waist seam at the back so that I could create my skirt pieces. And on the bodice, the upper part of the dress, it's just the same thing as the top. That instead of having that short piece that attached to the waist of the top, I have a fuller skirt. 
This is an athletic knit and I've used the same sizes, 12 full bust, 14 waist, 16 hips. I love how this skirt flows. I love the fit of this, how it's nicely fitted at the bust and the waist. It's just such a lovely dress. Here you can see the neckline, the center front seam. You can see how good the cover of the armholes is, front and back. So nice to sew and put together. Having the bodice lined inside completely feels amazing on. All the seams are enclosed inside and that just makes the dress feel extra special on. As always, a top can be a dress and I loved making the small changes that needed to happen for this top to become an amazing dress like this. with my spirit top and dress hack you know the bodice is so nice on the top there's no reason why you couldn't create your own skirt and I love that so doing those extra steps creating the pieces making the small changes is always really exciting and really fun because I can just see it finished in my head and then just making it come true is just the most amazing experience for me every single time if you haven't noticed, I actually do love sewing a great deal. I love creating pieces, thinking them up and making the changes and just making something that you see in your head be on your body and fit amazing. It's just incredible. As long as pairing it with a beautiful fabric, I think that's the best part of sewing. And I'm so happy that you follow my journey and follow my happiness as well. I love sharing it with you. And I hope to inspire you as well. I hope to inspire you to try new things, to try new sewing techniques. You know, not every neat project has to be quick, quick and done in an hour. You know, these ones take a little while, but they're so, so special and they feel so nice on. The lining inside, all those extra steps are just really, really nice. And you can tell, you can tell that these sewing techniques are there when you put it on the body and it feels so nice on with the lining. Don't forget that the Spear and Tank is 20% off for the first week. You can get your pattern for a little bit less, so that's good. I'll leave you in the description box my affiliate link if you would like to use it. Part of those sales come back to me as a commission and that's one of the ways I make an income on YouTube. So I appreciate it if you do use my link if you are planning to purchase your pattern and if my sewing tutorials help you. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye!